This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest stories in entertainment and showbiz. My name is Afel Lua Oshunke, and I'm here to keep you abreast with the trending entertainment stories. With me right now is my partner in entertainment crime and the Yang to my Ying, Ewa Ritu. We have a studio guest, CK Bon Chuka. Chukuka Ekwani is a futuristic Afropop artist. He was introduced to music at age seven by his dad, who was a choir coordinator. He began writing and producing music when he was just 13 years of age. He worked with Chocolate City as a production intern in 2015. He also got featured in MI's The Box alongside Price in Illegal Music 3. He was signed to Chocolate City in 2016. He describes his music as happy and colorful, as he ascribes a color to each of his songs. Ladies and gentlemen, Big welcome, the young and talented TK. It's like a tradition. <laughs> yeah, it's like a tradition. <laughs> What's up, welcome. man? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. It feels yeah. good to be here. Yeah, it feels good to have you on the mm -hmm. show as well. Exactly. So my first question for you is, um, how is it like working with MI? Because I know MI is a perfectionist, so what's mm. that like? Well, um, <clears throat> he's a perfectionist, <laughs> for one. Um, but number two, I mean, he's he's... He's somebody that's really great at what he does and um, passionate mm. about the industry as a whole, not just making music, but like he's passionate about helping other artists grow, making the industry itself better, mm. you know, and all that stuff. And he's just an overall great guy. Mm. Um, I like that you describe your music um, with colors yeah. because I, I've listened to like some of your music and they're actually full of life, yeah. especially God damn it. Mm. So now I want to. <laughs> I would, I would like to know um, your creative process. How do you get mm. all this inspiration? Well, um, I make music based on how I feel. Like, music is like, in my opinion, is the most accurate representation of human emotions. Because mm -hmm. you know, poetry, for instance, you express how you feel with words, but there are some feelings that can't really be expressed with words. They can only be expressed with vibes and mm -hmm. frequencies. And music is the only way to express that so there are times when i feel really happy and bubbly and whatever and i make happy songs yellow songs mm. or orange songs but there are times when i feel you know probably sad or blue or you know not as warm okay so for you sad is like purple blue, blue. Pur you know so there's like blue then there's like purple purple is like not really sad but like more of on a vibe like you're you just calm, me. cool, and collected. Yeah, yeah, just on one wave. Like Royalty that. kind of thing. You get me. Yeah. So that's like purple piece. So that kind of thing. So um, on my EP, which I just dropped, um, I would say most of the songs are actually like bluish purple. And if you notice, the cover is actually bluish purple. Why? Because the music is bluish purple. Mm, when you were in that mood, when you made all yeah. this. All right, so what's your definition of futuristic Afro pop? Because yeah. when I heard that, I was seeing some science fiction movies in my head. Like, <laughs> so, so. Yeah, so how I'll explain it is um, so Afro beats is a genre that has existed long before any of us were born, right? Now, I believe that as a new artist, if I'm going to matter, or if I'm going to make any meaningful contribution to this legacy of Afrobeats, I have to change it and do something that's never been done with the genre. So with every single song I make, I try to do something new with it. Me, I listen to all kinds of genres. I listen to rock music, I listen to hip hop, I listen to world music, mm. from Arab music to Indian music to French, Portuguese. Mm. Like if you check my playlist, I have like, crazy weird artists that you've probably never heard of you know so i like to listen to different stuff and infuse them with afrobeats i also listen to classical music a lot because growing up my dad used to always play beethoven mozart and all those guys in the house so um my new single way which i just dropped is a fusion of beethoven's fifth symphony and afrobeats you get me? So, like, that's a combination that's never been done and i would say it's the future of afrobeats because it's not been done so I did something that has not been done, and I brought it here. So I brought it from like the year 2056. Interesting. It's futuristic. <laughs> mm. now so I now let's it. talk about um, the music industry. And yeah. Let's talk about support. Mm. Do you think you get enough support? I mean, apart from your record label and other artists. Oh, he has a good artists. platform, so. Yeah, yeah no, uh, that's what I'm saying. Apart from the good platform, other mm. artists, do you think they support each other, like, um, especially up-and-coming artists? 
you know what I was saying? First of all, I'm going to say, I mean, I, I mean, on camera, I should say that, oh, it's a great industry, people support, but in reality, the truth is, the music industry is probably one of the fakest industries mm -hmm. in the world. And the reason why is because, so you see the bigger artists who are doing much bigger stuff, they, you know, they support each other on camera and everything, you know, and it looks good or whatever. But at the same time, everybody still competes against each other. And I feel like everybody doesn't really, really want the next man to Shine. progress, mm -hmm. even though outwardly they say it and they do eye service and act mm -hmm. like it. But I feel like, yeah, and you can, if you're in the industry, you can tell. But I mean, there are people who are genuine and who actually support, but there are some that only support when you've already popped, like when mm, your song is true. already big mm. and you don't need the support anymore. You know, like, for instance, when I dropped Container, my last single before this one, um, I had so many artist friends who never really supported, but there are a few, though, that supported. Big shout out to Vector, um, so many, Chinque Kun, Dremo. You know, I had guys who really supported from the day I dropped it, and mm. DJs and OAPs, you know, and everyone, but there are some people who only supported when the song was already big. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they would tag you in snaps and at CK, you know, and I'm like, Ugh. So, you know, that's just the way it is. It's, it's just very weird and, you know. Speaking of competition, I like the fact that you gave a special shout out to Vector and you're also in MI's <laughs> cup. And I we had, we we had Black Bones on that same chair mm. and he shed some light on the ongoing feud between MI and um, Vector. Yeah. So we'd like you to shed some light. What do you know about that? Is it that they've been beefing right from time or is it just something that came up? Uh, yeah. Are we going to get the culture. battle, you know, the face of that is that 40 million? Mm. Are we going to get <laughs> You guys that heard about in? the 40 million? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy was definitely cloud chasing with that. Anyways, um, definitely, def yeah, it was. So the no money. So Willie XO was just joking. Yeah. So the money. I mean, Hush Puppy I don't know. No I don't know. I, I know that Hush Puppy never came out to say mm. I'm dropping. Willie XO said Hush, Hush Puppy is dropping, yeah. mm. and we all know how social media goes. Mm -hmm. Everybody tries to jump. But on um, Vetter made a chase. video saying that is um, it's taking the challenge. It's taking the challenge, and then um, yeah. Willie called him, and Hush Puppy called him. Well, it takes two to thousand. All right, so shed some light on that beef. Mm. Like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, so, so, I mean, it's obvious they're beefing, and it's, the tension has been building for quite some time, and Vector has been throwing shots, shot after shot after shot, and M has been chilling, 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 so he finally decided to reply. Mm. And it was a banger. They reply mad. Of course. So, um, of course, we all agree. Yeah, so Vector is... So I'm kind of in between because... Emma has signed me. Emma has done like a whole lot for me. Emma is like my second father mm. in Lagos, yeah? But at the same time, Vector is someone that... It's not like we're besties or anything, but like in some little ways, he has shown me support as well. You know, like when my EP dropped, he tweeted it. When uh, my video dropped, posted it and all that stuff. And we actually have a song together on his album. So um, I'm not going to tell you, oh, I, I don't like Vector, I hate Vector. Mm because he's beefing with M.I. Mm. I mean, I believe, I don't believe in inheriting enemies or whatever, but I respect what they're both doing. And I know it's for the good of the hip hop community. Mm. I mean, like people are talking about hip hop So do you now. believe this beef is, part, um, beef is part of the hip hop culture? It is, it is, definitely is. And it's healthy for the hip hop it is. culture? I believe it is. Believe because it I mean, for, at least for the first time, um, apart from Black Bones, I think the, the two moments we had in hip hop this year was Black Bones and the MI Vector. Beef. That mm -hmm. was it. Okay, now let me put you in spot. Who do you think is the best rapper, MI or Vector? I honestly say MI. And I'm not even saying it because I know him. I just feel like MI is a better musician. Mm -hmm. Now, I, Vector is very talented as well. Very, very talented. But um, if I'm to pick, because I've been, I've been an MI fan since I was in like primary school. Mm. So I'm not even going to front and tell you. I've, I've, I respect MI's craft and he's very good at what he does, you know. And he just, he just has a technique to what he does. But Vector is also very good mm. as well. So 
It's just, I don't know. Everybody's okay, M.I. kind of insinuated that um, Vector is a good freestyler, but um, we all know that M.I. is a great rapper. So if they have this face-off mm. and it has to be freestyle or true, who do you think would win? Huh. Freestyle. I don't know. M also freestyles pretty good. Mm. Cool. I know, mm. but we all know Vector freestyles pretty good too. Yeah. Well, um, I doubt that M will accept that challenge, first of all, because mm. I feel like... The whole point of that challenge is like some guys that have some money that just saw what's going on and they just felt like, oh, these two legends of Nigerian hip hop, let us use them and catch crews. I personally feel that's what that 40 million is, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Like, if I were MI or I were Vector, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Because that money is money that I could make still from one endorsement or from just doing like maybe six, seven shows. I feel like somebody that is not even in the industry to just come from nowhere and just say, I want to see two of you fight. <laughs> um, excuse me, I don't owe you anything. Mm. Like, I don't know you. Even if you're dropping money, I don't have to accept your challenge. So, you kind of avoided my question. If it's freestyle, <laughs> who would win? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, honestly. Like, <laughs> I, really, I really don't know. Okay, let's bring this back to, to you. CK, yeah. Anyone could win, yeah. Now, CK, I was growing up. Mm. Because you know, started learning music yeah. from quite a very did you even after the childhood. Yeah. Yeah, I did. You did. You did. Yeah. You were allowed to go and play, not like Riaza Riaza all the time. Yeah, yeah. So like my childhood yeah, was like I mean I didn't grow up in a rich home or anything. Um and I didn't grow up in a poor home either. So um I just had like an average childhood. But my parents were like super protective. So like the first time I could enter public transport to go anywhere, I was like 16. Wow. Or 15. Mm. My parents would never... What? Enter bus or bike or what? So a driver I, would drop you or what? They would drop me themselves. Oh. And I had like an itinerary. House, school, church, school, house. Mm. Those are the only three places. Or if I have to go and do international passport or ID card or mm. go to the oh. store and they, and they will take me to all those places. If they are not taking me, I'm not allowed to go out. But eventually, like, I started going out there. You know, and um, yeah, it was it was an okay childhood. Um, I went to school. I grew up in Kaduna, by the way. Um, and I I was there my whole life till like 2014 when I came to Lagos, and I actually ran away from home to come to Lagos. Oh yeah. Yeah, because like, I really wanted for to real? do. Yeah, for real, for real. That's like the craziest Tell thing I've ever done. Tell us that story. What did you do? Mm -hmm. Okay. What so, How did that happen? Okay. So in school, I was a straight A student. Yeah. So my parents were not very. Yeah, you were keen. in a physics um contest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were not very keen on me doing music. Even though they knew I was really good at it, they just felt like I'm already doing so well academically. Music is for people who don't have a future and mm. who drink and smoke. That's how they just saw musicians and whatever. And I just felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm good at physics, I'm good at all these things, but this is what I want to do. This is what gives me peace of mind. This is the only thing that truly makes me happy. And if I were to sit on a desk somewhere for the rest of my life, I'll be depressed. So I decided I want to do music and mm. they were not having it. And we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, I had to have a, a, I had to sit down with myself and talk to myself and be like, I have to decide what I really want for my life. Um, I don't want to, you know, be depressed or have regrets like 20 years down the line mm -hmm. and be remembering this day and saying, ah, if I had just been braver to take a step, I would have been so, so and so place. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear people saying that stuff a lot. I could have been. I never wanted to say that, so I decided to take matters into my own hands, and I saved money. I saved like 40K over a period of like three months, because I was working in studios there. I wasn't getting much money, but I saved it, and I came to Lagos. I squatted with a friend for like a couple months. Then I moved to my own apartment. It was like a one bedroom in a three bedroom flat. You know those shared? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there. and. Um, yeah, man, one thing led to one thing led to one thing led to one thing. I came to Chocolate City. I met Your the parents Iana. didn't search for you. No, no, we're cool. We're cool now. I mean, after the first month, um, I still went back because we had gone back and forth on the phone mm -hmm. a lot and we had spoken, spoken, and they came to a point where they were like, okay, fine. That's this what, what you, you have to decided do. to do. Okay, fine. So we're already cool. So for Christmas, I just went home to cleared the air and then I came back to Lagos again. So yeah, we're really cool now. My parents are super supportive now and they understand 
like my drifts and whatever. Interesting. So. so what's new with CK? Yeah, so um, I just dropped an EP. It's called mm -hmm. CK the First. It's the best Afrobeats EP of 2019. Mm -hmm. I say that with my chest. Mm -hmm. You can quote me anywhere. And if you think I'm lying, go and listen to it and tell me that it's not the best Afrobeats project mm -hmm. this year. It's eight songs, 24 minutes long, and um, every single song is special, man. Every single one is beautiful. Did in you do it all way. alone or you had people? Um, I, I collaborated with not many artists, actually. I collaborated with just three, mm. Black Bones, Barry J, and Budge. All the names start with B. Okay, <laughs> so um, we have to really wrap up the show. We don't have much time. Mm -hmm. So, but um, you're going to have to take us to the future by signing us out when I do my sign out. Sure. It's a wrap on this episode. You can join the conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time on all our social media platforms or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Also, you can watch us on R2 TV and also in London on Ben TV. I can't and won't end the show without giving a special shout out to my co anchor Ewa Oritu, as well as our studio guest, C. Okay. And thank you as always to the production crew and Mifel Lua Oshunkea saying thanks for watching and stay blessed. My baby, my Valentine. Girl, are you the making my temperature the rise? If you leave me, I go die. I swear, you are like the oxygen I need to survive. I'll be honest. Your loving day taught me. I am so obsessed. I want to chop your own coffee. Your body they back at me, she will let open and make I see will let you belong wanting tea. We will make a bad man singer. Ah, All right, it's the year 2056, uh, like I told you, <laughs> and it's a wrap, guys. Thank you for watching.